Okay, so we now want to talk about the second divide, so which which is which is due to Alfors. So Schwartz told us that the Schwartz lemma was essentially a statement about holomorphic maps. There was distortions of holomorphic map. You know, the 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 image of the unit disk with respect um, the the radius of the image of the unit disk is bounded by the ratio of the constituent radii in the domain and, and it should be R2 over R1, I think. Um, well, the pick Schwartz lemma says that no, it's not that the holomorphic map is the object of study. It's the it's the Poincaré distance function that is the object of study here. So this led to obviously some some great developments, but it was actually really the the observation of Alfors that that really shot the Schwartz lemma into what it is today. And in fact, those intrinsic distances would not have arisen if it wasn't for this result here. Uh, that that's more of a fact about history than it is about mathematics, though. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to talk about the fact that. The Poincaré metric came from a Riemannian metric. Now, a Riemannian metric allows us to talk about intrinsic properties um, of, of a manifold, and in particular, a surface. So one, one of the most important features of the metric is, is its curvature. So how a space is curved when it is endowed with a, with a certain infinitesimal uh, length element, namely the, the metric. So what we have here is we have this we have this uh, surface, uh, a a Riemannian manifold of dimension two. And let, let's look at the point in the middle of this saddle. And what we can do is we can look at its unit uh, normal vector. Its normal vector in the direction. So it, it's it's normal vector when it is realized as a surface inside of R three, which is obviously what we're doing here. Now I can look at the tangent plane at this point as well. And I can now look at the parabolas which are formed from this surface. So here I have these parabolic um, these parabolic graphs that are realized over the tangent space and um, within, the, within the normal plane. So these are called the planes of principal curvatures. And now I could fit a circle in here that will touch this point up to order two, up to two derivatives it will coincide. And one, the reciprocal of the radius of that circle will be the principal curvature. And so what I can then do is look at the product of the principal curvatures here. And it's obviously you have to take some orientation into account. Here we're going to have a, um, when we have this Standard parabolic thing. It's it's um, it's bent in in here while it's bent out here. So we'll have some positively positive curvature in this direction while negative curvature in that direction. And then what we do is we we say that the curvature at this point is the product of the principal curvatures. So here, because we have a negative and a and a, a negative and a positive, we will have negative Gauss curvature at this point. Now, this is obviously a terrible way to do things because it entirely relies on the extrinsic nature of things, at least in the way I've described it. And we have we have this formula here which says that if we take the the lambda here is the coefficient in front of the arc length element, the coefficient in front of the mod dz, then the Gauss curvature is given by essentially the second derivative or minus the second derivative of the log of that function. And then there's this normalizing constant. Well, this the, you, you normalize it by the metric itself. So just to get a feel for the various types of curvatures, if we have the sphere is positively curved, so it's bent out everywhere. That's a nice way to think about it. Vanishing curvature is what we see on the plane. The, the torus also has vanishing curvature. And negative curvature is when we're we're bent in, hyperbolic. If we look at a high genus surface, so a surface of genus G greater than or equal to two, then this is also an example of a of a surface which admits uh, negatively curved metrics. So these you can put a metric if, if in fact constant negative Gauss curvature 
on on these things. Of course, they look bent out somewhere, but that's because of um, that's not intrinsic. That's extrinsic. That's how they look when you embed them in a Euclidean space. So, the point just to illustrate these ideas because it may seem complicated, but it actually is quite elementary. We, if we have the Poincaré metric, which is given by this formula here, then the lambda here is given by one over one minus mod z squared all squared. And what we want to do is compute the Gauss curvature here. So we need to take the log and compute its second derivative, or its complex Hessian, to a minus sign divided by the metric. So what we see here is actually that you will you will end up with when you when you do this calculation is exactly minus one over the, the coefficient of when you compute this you will end up with one over one minus mod z squared all squared that will give you a minus of one minus mod z squared all squared uh, divided by itself and this will be simply equal to minus one so it'll be independent of the point and so in particular we see that the the Gauss curvature of the Poincaré metric is constant and equal to minus one. So it's constant and negative. Now it's the theorem of Alfors that this is precisely what the Schwartz lemma is about. Namely, he says that if we, if you get a Riemann surface or so one dimensional complex manifold, so imagine a two dimensional surface, like a sphere, like the Riemann sphere, and it has a complex structure. So it's a complex manifold, it, it locally looks like Euclidean space with respect to holomorphic charts. You have a local holomorphic coordinate system in every point. And you have a metric on there of Gauss curvature, which is less than or equal to minus one. The precise value is, is just a normalizing factor. You can, as long as it's negative, then any holomorphic map from the disk into this space is distance decreasing in this way. Namely, if you take the distance function with respect to this metric of negative curvature, then it does not increase relative to the Poincaré distance. So you have this image from the disk between two points, and what will happen is that the, when you map it in, it will there will be a contraction. Of course, this is not to do with Euclidean distance, it's the hyperbolic distance, so the picture can only say so much. 